Last session of the day. Um, Daniel O is going to be presenting a comprehensive guide for Kubernetes native Java for us today. So with that, I'll turn it over to Daniel and let you let you go with it. Thank you so much, Mike. Hello, everybody. And then probably I'm on the last session today. And thanks for joining today. I'm super happy to be here and then talk a little bit about uh, Kubernetes native Java stuff. Uh, let me uh, kicking off. Uh, I have a few slides today. It's a more like I'm going to spend a lot of time, uh, most of my time for like a live demo show today. So my name is Daniel O, and I'm developer advocate at Red Hat, a specialized cloud native runtime, which is a Quarkus, Spring Boot, and JavaScript. And then I've been spending a lot of time bringing more Java application into uh, specific uh, use cases, for example, serverless, service mesh, and GitOps pipeline, like Algo City, Tecton, on top of the Kubernetes as well as the OpenShift container platform. I'm also Java champion and uh, Cloud Native Computing Foundation, also known as CNCF Ambassador, which allows me to uh, give some lot of opportunity and chances to meet a lot of awesome people virtually and in person. We're going to be talking about Cloud Native Architecture and how to uh, redesign your Microsoft application more Kubernetes Native way. Uh, Etc. Here is my contact information, uh, Daniel030, uh, Twitter. You can follow my Twitter. You can just subscribe to my YouTube channel. And then here is my Git repo, and you can uh, forward and then create the pull request and whatever you want. And then you can steal any kind of open source project, uh, open source demos and tools uh, from my Git repository. All righty. So just uh, real quick uh, remind people who uh, sometimes use two terminology interchangeably, like a cloud native and Kubernetes native. A lot of people actually use this terminology at the same time, or a little bit different time. But let me clarify what the difference is uh, between uh, cloud native and Kubernetes native is. is. Because I'm, my session is pretty much focused more on Kubernetes native Java application. So cloud is a literally uh, uh, were born in the cloud, like a public cloud provider. We could say hyperscalers or any kind of public cloud provider, like Amazon, Google, Microsoft, and Alibaba, and IBM Cloud, things like that. Whenever you bring your application, like a deploy your application, regardless of Java, .NET, Python, and they're running on cloud, and then you try to consume existing cloud services, for example, database and the messaging server, or some SMS server, or email server, something like that, rather than stand up your own, your on-prem machines. And then, so some of the, your non-functional capability, like a service discovery or uh, load balancing, you don't need to implement that the application, for example, like a 12 factor characteristics, you don't need to do that because the cloud provider actually serve that capability as a part of the SaaS services. So if you do design your application and also functionality uh, to use underpin the cloud technology as many as possible, you could say my application pretty much more like cloud native. What about the Kubernetes native? It's a Kubernetes also cloud, however, it, you need to use container technology and the container orchestration tool, which is the Kubernetes and the container runtime, like OCI or previously like a more traditional way with Docker. Or uh, you just, uh, if you joined the previous session, like a Podman is all of the container uh, tools. So you can actually deploy your application without containers just like a deploy to application with an artifact, like a job file or just JavaScript on the virtual machine, or you could say it's easy to instance rather than packaging container. However, why you need to think about container, which is more give it some comp like a portability and also immutability uh, in a more high scalable, pretty much easier to stand up hybrid and multi-cloud architecture and strategies. So, Cloud is not hard require the Kubernetes is not hard requirement on cloud. However, Kubernetes native is more like a cloud, it's more like a small set of 
cloud. However, so a lot of company already move forward to cloud with the Kubernetes environment. For example, OpenShift is uh, one of the enterprise grade application platform based on Kubernetes. So as long as you want to deploy your application Kubernetes platform, you also consider about new design architecture, how to make my application more Kubernetes and native stuff. So there is some kind of journey for specifically developer, how to make my application from zero, which is just a normal Microsoft application to Kubernetes and native application. Once you arrive at that destination, you can say I'm a superhero of the Kubernetes Java application development. So here's a, for example, what kind of capability Kubernetes actually provide for developer? for specifically inner loop and out loop processes. So you needed to sometimes externalize your configuration from like an external server, for example, Spring Config Server or some external metadata databases, rather than store that specific data into your application project, for example, application property or YAML file, which is not a good way specifically Kubernetes environment because your application gonna be packaging as a container and scale out in based on incoming network traffic or resources utilization. It's a make it always not tie in some of the specific configuration file or more like a, a dynamically and flexibly attach and detach some of the configuration rather than store with some static code inside of your application side. Also, you need to also store some sensitive information such as password or uh, session key, something like that, which is also you need to store out of your application. So Kubernetes actually provided that feature through ConfigMap or Secret also provides some of the feature uh, service discovery, service res res resiliency, and uh, auto scaling and the data bunch of stuff. Previously, traditionally developer actually take care of that, develop and implement that non-functional capability inside the application. So you could just delegate that burden to Kubernetes platform and then make your applications more small, like a smaller, lighter, and then uh, just focus more on application development, like a business requirement of realization rather than adding more like a platform features into your application based on Kubernetes features, which is making your application more Kubernetes native Java stuff. So that's it. That's I want to just uh, give some quick introduction. What is the goal of this session? And let me just start from scratch to develop new Microsoft application like a based on Java technology with the Quarkus. So stop my sharing, I mean, my slide deck. There are several ways to start Quarkus application development. If you have any experience with the Quarkus development with the hands-on experience so far, you're probably familiar with the Quarkus.io. It's a public web page. You can find like a, a starting coding, it's a project generator. You can actually change whatever you want, group ID and artifact ID and a view to Maven Gradle or Gradle with the Kotlin. And also you can choose like a Java 11, 17, 21. Please don't tell me you're still using Java 8. So we don't support Java 8. So 11, 17, 21, and then you can uh, generate like a sample application, like a hello world. And then you can specify your application artifact version. More importantly, you can actually choose to some enterprise capability to implement your application. For example, like a web application or a data transaction using like a, some database, relational database, post SQL, like a MySQL database, or even non SQL database like Amazon DynamoDB or MongoDB or some any other like a non SQL database. There are many uh, hyperscaler integration, Amazon, Google, Microsoft, and then like a messaging uh, capability. There are more than uh, 650 uh, extension, Quark extension uh, now available. You can actually pull it down and then push it, uh, integrate your application, just like uh, Maven dependencies or graduate modules. So 
You can also using some of the uh, Maven command line or Quark CLI to generate new project and then maintain your ongoing project. So let me try to use Quark CLI uh, today, which uh, give me more uh, benefit because I don't need to remember or memorize all Maven or grad parameter. It's pretty much easier to add a new extension or remove them as well as a build application, deploy application, pretty much uh, shorten command line and it uh, give me some auto completion capability as well at the same time. So let me try to new Quarkus project. Let's say uh, Quarkus project name, uh, Cube Native Java. It automatically generated a bunch of the file, uh, for example, configuration property and then Docker file in case you know packaging application and deploy to Kubernetes as a part of your out of the process. And then uh, maybe wrapper. So just say, imagine that uh, many developers actually take care of uh, multiple projects at the same time. So this project actually using Java 11 and that project using Java 17, which means that you have some different version of a Maven tool to build and packaging application. So you want to switch it back to back. It's a really not easy way to manage multiple projects at the same time. So that's of course actually generate Maven wrapper which you don't need to change in Maven version whenever you change a project. You just run Maven wrapper uh, uh, to build application and packaging application. But in my demo, I was, I just focus on a one Java project. So I don't need to maybe use the Maven wrapper. And then here's some uh, rest easy reactive core star example as well. Let me try to quit my Java version here. I'm using Java 21 open JDK uh, and then so when I go to change a new directory and then you can see that a new Maven project automatically generated by default, you can actually change it to Gradle or Gradle with Kotlin. Uh, let me bring it up uh, using my ID tool. Let me try to make it bigger uh, for you. And then uh, go to source directory and then one separate application, just like a hello world. So endpoint for RESTful API, hello, and the return hello from REST is reactive. So just for your information, Quarkus actually builds on Reactive Engine, which is a Bertie and Netty. So you can actually implement reactive and non-reactive application at the same time, which is the same class. And then you can just define, okay, this is a non-reactive method, and this method the truly reactive uh, programming, which is really cool for developers because if you have any experience with Spring Reactive to migrate from Spring application, it's totally messy to rewrite line by line to based on Spring Web Rocks and the Spring integration or sometimes Spring Function and Spring Cloud, specifically like a Kafka integration, which is a totally uh, not migration, it's more like a refactoring or rewriting whole applications. And let me go back to Terminal. Let me try to uh, run Quark's Dev, which he, uh, give us some Live coding capability, and uh, just first thing, I'm gonna run my application for my local to start application. And as you can see, oh, okay. As you can see, I'm running on Java JVM, and then 21. So the race version six uh, 36.2, and then you can see that their profile activated and the live coding activated. So when I could uh, press W here, it's just going to welcome page. And now you can see that some of the uh, visually dev UI and endpoint when I click on that, it's the real, real hello from message reactive. When I go to dev UI, there are a bunch of the capability you can find. So what I'm, what I'm gonna try to uh, explain this kind of like a dev UI or live coding stuff, maybe you think about that, oh, this is not related to Kubernetes in every application because I'm expecting more how to make an application integrate Kubernetes capability rather than just like a normal application development. But what I want to try to say here, just imagine that. So traditionally, you only focus on inner loop for your daily job. You need to write in code and the build and the testing application. Once you're done, just push the code in the your GitHub repository, that's it. And then you don't need to better file your application production or product, which is not your responsibility at a time. However, when your company adopt Kubernetes, you need to also verify your application capability, I mean, functionality or features with the container environment. Even if not production, maybe you can have a small 
uh, Kubernetes environment, like a mini cube or a developer sandbox for OpenShift container platform. So this is a, you can say a little bit small, a lot of powerful scope of outer loop. And then how do you spend more time out of loop process to better by application capabilities? But your company most likely doesn't give more time to do that for you. So best way you need to make it faster your whole job in inner loop process. So this whole kind of new feature and then develop a productivity feature across you make a shorter life cycle from writing code to testing and build code your application as a part of the inner loop process. And then once you save your time and have a more spare time after finish your inner loop process, you could spend that spare time for out of the process with the purpose, specifically making your application Kubernetes in every application. Hopefully you understand that why I could try to uh, start from scratch and uh, try to showcase uh, this capability. And then uh, you can see that continue testing. So make what is the best way, what's the best practice to make your application more like a, like a more like a high quality. So that's the reason why TDD, uh, test driven development was born and a lot of enterprise architecture really impressed with that practice. However, it's not easy to apply that practice for individual developer because a lot of developer uh, we so busy and we don't have enough time to create the test case every single time and then start some of the test tool, check style or the other stuff. And then if they could have a continual testing capability automatically rather than manually hit the button whenever I change the code, which is awesome. So Quarkus actually probably continual testing capability. Let me try to start continual testing first. And then it literally just run one use case is like a unit test, which is green, means that your test is succeeded. So let me go back to my application and go to test case here. Now you can see one test case uh, when you set uh, Quarkus test annotation, and then with the test annotation, uh, expect to invoke less API, hello, and the return hello from less easy react, which is exactly the same code, my actual implementation. Let me try to go terminal and I'll put new terminal and then try to, uh, let me try to a little bit bigger and then try to access endpoint in the terminal and then hello from message reactive. And then let me go back to my application. And then whenever I change my application, just like we imagine that, oh yeah, I need to change my business logic for like a bug fix or add a new features or uh, some of the testing for performance tuning. So I'm going to change it like a welcome to Dev Nation May 2023. I just save a file and then go back to and then re just rerun endpoint. And now I can have a welcome to Dev Nation May 2023. This is really live coding means. So in order to process, whenever you change the code and then verify your application, you need to stop runtime recompile and rebuild, make it a job file and read on the application and verify that. A few more steps is necessary. It is not difficult, this is a necessary practices. It's a known practices. However, you just need to just change the file or on the application, it really happened. So Quarkus provided uh, the continual testing. The first thing, you already save some time uh, without recompiling, rebuilding, and restart your application manually. However, when I go back to a runtime environment, I just recognize and literally there are some error. So because of my continual testing, oh, I just expecting hello from less easy reactive as a return code. However, you actually returned welcome to Devonation Math 2023. I want to be mad, but I just so let you know there is something wrong your test case. So if you can prepare to web UI, and then you can also go to continue testing, the same result here. So let me try to fix the problem right away as just like a daily job of a normal developer. And then I'm going to welcome to definition. Is that a space in there? Oh, okay. Let me try to copy just to make sure, uh, in, like avoid like a typo. I just 
save to save file back to the here and then now it's good my test the uh, back to the normal and then this is really happening whenever you change the code even add a new functions or add a new test cases let me try to uh give it let me give it a try one year new test case real quick because a lot of people really doubt it oh yeah you just add a new uh just change one text code if you i could add a new method is this still working for continuous testing as or as a live coding if it is broken uh it i just need to spend more time i go back to the inner loop process as usual which means that i don't have a extra time uh to take care of the outer loop process for making cloud level Java, a uh, Kubernetes Java application. So let me try to add a new uh, method, just copy and then change the method name here and the new endpoint, let's say greeting. And then let me try to new end code Kubernetes uh, Java with the purpose and that's it. And then back to the here, now I have your new test here. You have a new test case and then you got some new error here. For or for, there's no resources to map my test cases. So this example, I didn't actually edit a new method uh, to map my new test case. So let me try to add one and then try to method the name and the new path, just like I defined in test case and then the return is a cube native Java with, it. and then I'm not gonna uh, type in the same thing. However, I'm just maybe, maybe save some file, quarter three, because let's say we're gonna keep changing Quark's version. So let me try to make a more dynamically binding this uh, variable rather than a static code here. And then I'm gonna add the config uh, property here. No, not this one. Let me try to copy properly and then I'll try to name, which is just like a name. That's it. Let me go try to back to the uh, application. Oh, I got to steal error, one more error, and it cannot fail because the I cannot find some name, the key, the name as a key, and there's no value with the name because. When I go to application properly, I don't actually uh, didn't add one. If I just reload the Quarkus dev UI, it's really show the, the error logs right away, instantly, which is so helpful for a developer to recognize and troubleshoot the error. Because, oh, I need to add like a Quarkus here and update it. And now you gotta go to here. It's just a fixed up problem. When I go back to terminal window and then try to invoke REST API, and then now you can Kubernetes Java with the Quarkus. And also, when I go to uh, configuration, it show what kind of configuration you can have, not only application or some like a, the Quarkus uh, core level, sometime like a build time engine. And then let me try to find the name here. And then here is the, where is the, uh, here is a Quarkus. Here, I mean, let me try to change the Quarka 3 because I'm using Quarka 3 right now. And then save a file and back to the terminal and then invoke REST API. And now I got a new return here, Quarka 3. What happened? Because when I change some of the configuration from when you are, it really changed my local file system here, application property. And here's a one missing I changed my application configuration from when you are, which he automatically updated my local file system. However, it didn't change in my test case. When I go back to uh, continue testing, I just fail again, there is no Quark version three. You can also, if we can also prepare the terminal window, you can find literally the same error here as uh, you prepare. And then let me try to go back to uh, test cases and then change that. And then back to the terminal. Now you can stay to test cases of passing. You can go to web UI. You also have all green two cases, which is cool. So uh, this is a uh, literally uh, some of the uh, fundamental feature for developer productivities. 
so you can save more time to process uh, handle your inner process right now and you can uh, spare you can use that spare time for out of process and let me try to stop uh, Quark's demo so what about the this uh, so, but you maybe sometimes you care about your ops team as well like a platform engineer or a DevOps engineer what they say like um, SRE something like that they actually not they doesn't they are not much care about application uh, like a developer productivity but much more like a resource utilization they only care about the like scalability and stability as well as resource utilization so what if you could make your application smaller okay as many as okay, as much as possible so that's Quarkus provide uh, native comparison and native build, make it smaller. And then even if it's a Java application based on JVM, pretty much faster and smaller rather than any other Java application framework, like a Spring Boot. So let me try to build my application using Quarkus CLI. And then you can also using Maven, like a clean package or Maven clean install or Gradle uh, install, something like that. It automatically kicking up, kicked it up the uh, test cases, and then I just build my application. Let me try to before I run my application under the target directory. And then here's my active monitor. I already have a bunch of the job a JVM application. So let me try to highlight to distinguish a new JVM when I run my application locally. And try to not this one, Java jar. And then target directory and app and then runner. When I run your application, you can see that it's start of time like a less than half a second. You probably maybe it's a, maybe second time is a little bit uh, a little bit faster, like a still like a 441 second. Just remember that I'm gonna uh, bring that up once again. And then when I go to Activate monitor and then now you can say new JVM that's a 90 megabyte edge memory footprint. And then let me try to just verify my application capability, invoke less for API, my application totally working. And then memory slightly increase from 90 to 93, like a 3.2 megabyte in just increase. So so this is a, like a more like a JVM stuff but still less than half a second, the start of time. So if I try to build application with a uh, 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 native application, I'm gonna skip unit test because I already succeed and I spend a little bit, uh, spend, uh, save a little bit my demo time. So with the native comparison, uh, it's a pretty much smaller, make it smaller and tiny, not only start of time and memory footprint, just imagine that whenever you deploy application Kubernetes, and that application can be should be scale out large number of a pod, like not just a one or not a ten pod, it's more like a hundred or ten thousand pod could be possible based on your incoming traffic for the application. And then when you push that container image and the pull down and the scale out, it's all about uh uh cost money on infrastructure, for example, storage as well as a network bandwidth as well. So make it smaller and there's like a small size of a container image, which is a pretty cool, save your money on also faster startup time, specifically scalability or eventually with the application uh, with some messaging broker or Kafka cluster or serverless application. It uh, avoids some of the challenges of a cold, cold start strategy. So when I go take it up the target directory now, I can have 46 megabyte size and then one uh, runnable, executable native file. Just here, so when I try to build same application with the Spring 3.2 uh, with the native, uh, with the Spring native, it's more than 120 megabyte size. So maybe it's uh, like a, almost 2.5 bigger, but maybe you could say, oh, it's a still, uh, small enough uh, for you. However, just imagine that it's not your local. It's more like a think about the production and then 
120 megabyte size uh, times like a 10,000 part or even millions part, which is a huge storage uh, you see it on your product chain bottom one. And then I don't need to Java command line anymore to run this executable file. It's a literally executable file. And let me try to target and runner. And now you can see that like a 24 millisecond, if you try to make a second time, a little bit faster, like a 15 second. Previously, like a 441 millisecond. So this uh, same application is more like a 25, almost 30 times faster start of time. And then when I go to uh, activity the monitor, now you can see that 10 megabytes, previously 90, is a nine times less than uh, memory footprint as well. If I just check it out, the memory, the new Let's Play API, same return, my function still working, and then slides increase like a two or 1.5 megabyte. So just think about that. So if you sum the purpose of the Kubernetes deployment, if you're more looking forward to high scalability or fast start of time, and then native compilation, which is one of the best option for you, uh, because a lot of people, a lot of companies are moving forward to uh, .NET, uh, Go, and then JavaScript to solve this kind of challenges. But now to Java developer, you don't need to learn something new around the JavaScript or Golang or .NET platform because you focus in with Java provide uh, even better performance like a startup time as well as a small memory for free from now on. So let me try to stop it and then just open new, uh, just go back to my project. So let's say this is a pretty much a hello world. And then what about the more uh, realistic scenario or application capability? For example, most likely application enterprise application communicate with the database to store business data. Like uh, some using RDBMS, like a PostSQL or Oracle database or some non-SQL data. So let me bring up a uh, database capability into my application. To do that, I'm gonna need to add some uh, extension, like a JDBC PostSQL. I'm gonna use a JDBC PostSQL and then like a JPA implementation based on Hibernate Warren Panache. And then uh, I'm gonna try to consume and produce uh, some data based on JSON format. This is exactly, I'm gonna use the rest easy uh, reactive checksum. So let me try to run my application but for that. So I'm just checking my, uh, I mean, actually uh, using Podman right now, but as alias Podman to Docker, which is more uh, like a, some uh, um, familiar with a lot of people. So this is really really Podman, uh, just alias command line. So I don't have any runtime running container at this moment. And when I try to run Quarkus Dev again, and the Quarkus actually, always try to figure it out what kind of extension you already have. For example, uh, JDBC PostSQL, uh, the Quarkus really, really realize, okay, you wanna try to create some database uh, in, uh, business logic. Let me check to bring up some quick database like a container. Uh, for example, when I go back to another terminal, now you can see PostSQL database here. So this is a really, really the feature of Quarkus Dev services. Let me go back to UI and then try to reopen, uh, reload my uh, dev UI and then go to dev services. And now you can see that. So PostSQL automatically uh, create a PostSQL container automatically startup and a few configuration already set up. But this is not edited my application properly directly. It like an out of box feature. So we say zero configuration we do dev services based on test containers. So if you have any experience to use test container on Java project for pro, you need to add test container configuration, for example, some of the dependency on your Palm XML or Gradle. And also you need to start test container like a Kafka uh, class or some any other like a PostSQL class to initialize your test container on your Java method. However, Quarkus actually 
its own test container with zero configuration, which means whenever you add relevant extension, PostSQL or MS SQL server, or like some messaging broker, KeyClock or SSO, you know, there are many extensions which allows automatically stand up dev services automatically. So uh, if you wanted to we I mean, override the password, for example, I don't want to use the uh, password part because too obvious. And you could just go to here, copy, and the change whatever you want. So I'm going to uh, leave the, by default, by the way. So this is a really one of the good thing for developer. You don't need to memorize all keys and values to stand up some specific uh, capability, for example, database connection. So I don't remember the JWC URL keys, keyword, and then you don't need to remember that focus actually provides that kind of stuff. Okay, so now I'm gonna try to add a few Java code here, try to like an uh, entity, like uh, let's say person. And then let me try to add entity class here. And then I'm gonna extend and then punish entity. And then I'm gonna try to specify some name and then like a city that's it so so the panache actually uh so a lot of people are actually uh wondering what is a panache panache is uh give us some is try to augment your hybrid orm capability so whenever you define like a dao dto application or some data repository you need to implement fundamental operation, for example, getter, setter, and then like a, a CRUD capability, persist data, update data, insert data, delete data, things like that. And and then our Panache entity actually uh, in already implement uh, the kind of capability by default. You just need to consume that rather than uh, overriding or overriding uh, that application uh, capability. Uh, on your application side. So just see, just that, but I just finished my, uh, created my new entity. Let me try to add a new method here. For example, I wanna try to re uh, return not text format, like a JSON format, and then like a new endpoint person, and then which you return all person data from database, person here. And then I'm gonna try to restore all data and then like I said, here's a person and an already defined, predefined fundamental operation. That's it, I just created a new one method. Let me try to skip the test driven development using continuous testing at this moment because uh, there's a bunch of stuff I need to showcase uh, uh, rest of the my demo time. And I'm gonna give it another one thing, just try to find specific ID rather than whole data and then it, will return one person data here. And then let's say find by ID, and then I need to uh, pass down parameter, which is uh, like ID, and then try to, here we go. So I just created two uh, method here. You can also create a new method, like a post method, uh, by HTTP request to store new data, or you can actually define uh, pre-SQL data. So like I'm gonna try to create a new pre-SQL. So when I uh, do the same thing in Spring Boot, you actually create some SQL file for DDL, like a create a table and create some schema index or something like that. And the Quarkus actually data service automatically create the DDL, which means you don't need to define the DDL statement, just uh, more like an insert or some update the statement rather than uh, DDL. It's more like a pretty much DML stuff. So let me try to insert into person table and the values. Let's say uh, my name is Dan, and then I'm actually uh, based on Boston. Okay. And then I try to add two more, uh, like a, um, Jenny from New York City, and then let's say Justin. 
uh, from Orlando. Okay, I just save a file. And let me go back to terminal, finger crossed, and then try to new endpoint person. So now I gotta return three, return code if I try to find the number two, which is a, a Jenny. And if I go to number one, which is a Dan with me. That's it. Wow, I just created, a, I just spent like a five minute to create a new uh, cloud capability. And then with the dev services, uh, save my time to stand up a uh, container. I don't need to write a Docker container, Docker file. I don't need to find the, which container recipe I need to use that. And what is the Docker pool command line? We just uh, pull pass of a container registry. It's so all kind of necessary job to use test container or like a, some traditional container environment. I just save a whole time. As long as you're going to run container runtime on your local machine, which is a Podman or Docker, Quarkus automatic startup. And then I'm going to try to now deploy my application as a part of the out of the process to verify my application still working on Kubernetes environment. So I'm going to try to use uh, Red Hat develop a sandbox, which he uh, give you uh, open the cluster for free uh, for 30 days. So as long as you sign in, uh, just a quick, you can go to uh, developers at redhead.com and then go to develop a sandbox and then go to develop a sandbox here. And then you can actually uh, start when this is your first time for you, you could, you need to sign in your valid email address and then verify your identification, like an email or text message, something like that. And you're going to give us some, you're going to have some, uh, new Kubernetes cluster for next 30 days. Not only Kubernetes cluster, but also, which is OpenShift, by the way. And uh, there are many tutorial as well as uh, some learning experience and the blog post. And uh, there are many kind of uh, learning stuff you can actually give it a try with the developer sandbox. And then here's my developer sandbox, my empty project EOH at dash dev. And then go to terminal. Let me just make sure I'm in the right namespace, DOH dev. And then in order to deploy my application, the previously and the traditionally, I need to create a container image with some Docker file. As well as I need to Kubernetes manifest like a YAML file, define the deployment service, as well as where is my container image, how to set up the replication, there are a bunch of things you need to specify on your manifest file, like a YAML file, and then you need to run like a kube kernel to apply that manifest to your targeting Kubernetes cluster. So Quarkus actually provide uh, some nice feature to uh, avoid that necessarily, but you're just more like a print your whole property on your application, which you have more uh, pro programmatically way to define and the that process, so let me try to add two extension like OpenShift and Kubernetes config, which allows me to uh, integrate Kubernetes configuration as well as secret uh, just a little bit later. And then I go back to my application here and then open the application properly. I'm going to try to use real PostSQL database rather than my dev spaces. I'm going to try to uh, set up new PostSQL. And then let's say the database name and the table name is a person. And I'm going to create to drop and create a strategy rather than update because this is your first time. And then this is not that environment, some medical products environment. And then I'm going to try to delete that prefix right now. And then uh, load. Load script file here, which is import SQL. This is all post-SQL compilation. Let me try to bring on Kubernetes compilation to uh, deploy this application, including build application, containerized application, and pushy and pull, and then uh, some invoke some of the Kubernetes API as well. So uh, Kubernetes and deployment, I'm gonna make it true. And then what is the target 
which is OpenShift. You connect, say, Kubernetes or uh, Knative, which you make an application, serverless application. And then I'm going to export the route URL, uh, source about URL true, which he automatically generate like a full, full, fully qualified uh, domain name like AppKidua based on OpenShift HA proxy. The similar concept of nginx ingress uh, controller in a uh, vanilla Kubernetes. And then uh, one more thing is client and uh, certificate trust. So let me try to just compile and then build just to hit hit the command line and then back to the here, try to explain the last compilation. So OpenShift the developer sandbox actually use self-certificate for like a TLS termination, like a HTTPS protocol. So with that, I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna to trust the self-certificate rather than commercial one. So this compilation allows me to use and trust the self-certificate uh, file on OpenShift the developer sandbox. And then when you go back to terminal and uh, just looking at the runtime logs, so first time uh, we're gonna build an application like a job file here. And then we're gonna create a new container image based on image stream uh, using OpenJDK 21, and then uh, containerize the application and then uh, starting up with the processor, which he uh, uh, just create container image and then push that image into container registry inside of OpenShift cluster. And then when I go back to I mean, the window, oh, I just forgot that I don't have any database here. So this pro this application will be failed. So let me try to add a new database in the meantime, go back to PostSQL, and then name is person, and then uh, pet, username, you pass username user and the password is super secret, which I defined here. And then database name is person. Again, and then back to the topology, my Quarkus application failed because there's no database to connect. And then let me try to add this label. More like a distinguish with the Quarkus project. Uh, post SQL. Okay, so let me try to quickly my pod. Oh, uh, maybe just deleting, make sure. And back to the top of the view. <laughs> and then, so Quarkus application starting again. And then it's communicating my post SQL. And then go to view logs. Okay. Person. Oh, unknown is the person. So did I miss something here? This create a person. Oh, let me try to uh, delete PostSQL once again. And then try to create a new database one more time. Maybe there are some typo in there. Uh, try to person, right? And then user and then my super secret, the person. Let me try to create a new one. And then add the label. So now it's a SQL. And then try to connect to my application. And then here to my personal application, go to view logs. There we go. And then you can see that automatically I create a new data based on import. And then you now you can see the pro file product application there's no live coding because this is a production. Let me go back to topology and then automatically create a route URL. Let's copy that, go back to terminal, and then try to access to first endpoint hello, which is welcome to Devination May 2023. What about the greeting endpoint? Uh cube native job with the quarter three, which is cool. And the one last thing is person. 
and then which he returned three data like a Daniel, Jenny, and Justin. If you are go to three, should be Justin here, which is cool. So now I perfectly uh, better find my application from my local to Kubernetes so with just like a couple, like a, let, let's say like a 35 minute to make it happen. But now I'm not gonna say my application Kubernetes Java application because when I go back to my application, you can see that still some of the computation static hard code in my application rather than externalization. Also some of the sensitive information like a user super secret database password still stored in my application rather than externalize it. So there is some opportunity to make my application better Kubernetes native Java app with the Kubernetes capability such as Compute Map and Secret. So that's exactly I tried to add Kube Config extension in advance here. Uh, Kube Config extension, which allows me to connect to Kubernetes resources directly from my application to that resources. Let me go back to the application properly. I'm going to enable uh that kubernetes the complement secret so kubernetes configure map here oh not this one actually okay let me try to create the kubernetes complement first uh let, let me try to cube cuddle you can use a cube cuddle here's the username user and a super secret when i go back to devil uh develop sandbox in the ui you can see here, uh, uh, I mean, I just create the secret, uh, uh, a DB credential name, and then we build value. And you can see username, key, and a value of user, and then key, password, and the value super secret. Exactly the same on my static code, my application. You can also create a compute map. Let me try to create a new compute map, and then let's say a uh, name my config and then like a data my config name is a parkers 6262 uh 63 six, uh, 362 this is a, a race one i just save a file and you can see that the key my config name and the uh, value parkers is 362. let me go back to here and then i'm going to try to add a new kubernetes Kubernetes config, uh, config map. So I'm going to make an enable. And then this is a the config map is a my config. And then also I'm going to secret DB credentials. And then I'm going to uh, enable this feature as well. So let me try to rebuild and compile and redeploy application, which is one single command line Quarkus CLI. So it literally, you can actually using a predefined Docker file in case you want to want. And then when I go to target directory previously, it automatically generate Kubernetes manifesto like a YAML and JSON, which is all automatically defined, generated based on your application properties. So that's, you don't need to write a Kubernetes YAML, just like your traditional out of the process, which uh, save your time to take care of uh, spend more time make a Kubernetes native Java application. So I'm, I'm gonna add one more uh, thing is, uh, let me try to add really fast. We have running all the time, package type, which is a uh, uh, mutable, and then uh, live reload, password. This is between uh, remote Kubernetes cluster and uh, my local machine and the library load and the URL, which is this endpoint URL and a pass here and then Quarkus output shift environment variable and then Quarkus launch demo, which is a truth. So, and then with the dead, so this is a, just imagine that sometimes you're going to deploy application Kubernetes and then you got some error. Uh, you just notify for your DevOps engineer. And then when I try to troubleshoot that error inside the container, 
the container is already gone uh, due to the, the fantastic Kubernetes feature like a replication and has to check. Just get the part and then create the new one. So of course, you probably have some centralized log, log distribution infrastructure like open telemetry or dyna trace or CCD. But in order to access their real logs in production environment, you may be up the ticket. And then it takes maybe a couple of hours or even one day or two days. In the meantime, you have maybe more than like a 10,000 line of logs. It's not easy to find the right error logs. As I read, it's maybe too complicated, too hard to uh, solve that problem uh, like a couple of hours later. So if you could have like a live coding capability, just like a local machine with a remote Kubernetes cluster to fix the problem right away, that'll be awesome. And that'll be actually save you more time and put more effort into making your application Kubernetes Java apps. So the container is a really like a immutable image. However, this compilation make your container like a mutable because we're gonna connect to from local to remote cluster. And then whenever it changes code, it automatically changes it in a sending to remote container part. That's why we make a mutable jar. And then for the security, this is a password between my local uh, uh, parking runtime and then remote container part is a targeting URL and uh, just running a demo here. And I also based on a secret, let me try to change this just delete it hardcore and then change it to parameter. So key was username and then password also key is a password. And then go back to my application and then my config map key is my config name. So I just change it's all referring to Kubernetes secret to get database credential and then get the, some of the, uh, the uh, compilation not from my local, it's from Kubernetes complement. So let me try to, this should be the last build. And then once it just deployed the application Kubernetes, it's gonna start Quarkus remote to dev, which allows me to connect from my local Quarkus runtime to remote to Kubernetes pod directly. That's it. Uh, that's all I wanted to say today. And then uh, just a quick summarize. Uh, so you normally create a new application for like a microservices and container application. There are a bunch of steps from writing code and a testing build, just like in a local process. And also you need to really be spend time to out of the process like a better buy application, containerize application, and it creates some Kubernetes manifest like a YAML file, and then deploy uh, your application to Kubernetes. And in the meantime, you can actually uh, push that container image into some of the container registry, like a Docker Hub or a Quay.io or your internal container registry. This all kind of like a seven or eight step you already need to do whenever you change the code or uh, add a new business capability or bug fix or some migration test anytime you need to do that. So it's really hard to find some time to improve your application more Kubernetes-enabled Java app, even if you already understand how to do that. So this Quarkus capability gives some, make us some more spare time to focus more on Kubernetes Java app, also encourage your developer productivity, not only application development, but also testing, and then uh, creating some Kubernetes manifesto and then directly deploy to Kubernetes cluster. Okay, it's a packaging app and the containerized app and then pushing into container registry, almost done. And then when I go back to my topology view here, and then you can see that a second build is just working on right now. And then, oh, we got some error. Oh, it says a connection error. Oops. So sometimes this is happening for some network issue. So let me try to uh, go back to slide deck, just summarize uh, just uh, during the second build. So I already uh, created 
uh, some kind of pre-recording demo video for this talk. So I just, just posted my YouTube channel. Here's like a mini URL, Daniel TV, or like a YouTube handler, Daniel 030. If you can actually uh, scan in this QR code on your mobile phone. And then please subscribe and then uh, just the, uh, share your thought around that of uh, more than like 200 demo videos as well as a technical tutorial. You can also give me just some idea. Hey, Dan, I'm just wondering how to uh, create like an Argo CD like a, for my GitOps practice on Java application and specifically Kubernetes cluster with some ham chart integration and more than happy to create a new tutorial and uh, provide some of the uh, more valuable content for individual developer, but also platform and IT uh, operation team as well. So let me try to go back to terminal and then it takes a little bit more time. And I think this is my last, my session is the last session today. So luckily there's no other speaker right after me. So hopefully uh, this is gonna be work at this moment. Okay. <clears throat> okay, be <PO> succeed. <clears throat> and then back to the window. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. So new deploy and then go to view logs. And the quarter season I started and starting right now. And then I'm going to try to run uh, Quarkus remote to dev using Maven command line. Now you can see that uh, database connection is fine because I just created new data. One of the interesting here, you can see that Quarkus step activated, live coding activated, even if a production. And then I can just run, uh, just run my local runtime. In the meantime, let me try to uh, call like a person which is to make sure uh, I can access the database with the uh, credential from Kubernetes secret rather than my local. Now I can access database. And what about the the other endpoint, <clears throat> which is not Quarkus 3, it's a Quarkus 362 from Compute Map. And when I run uh, remote to dev, you can see they connect remote server here. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then go back to application. And let me try to add a new like a data here, like a number four. Uh like here, Mike. Uh like I just saw Raleigh from like a Red Hat Tower. And I'm gonna try to go to person number four. And then go to runtime, Quarkus automatically detect which file actually changed that, like an import SQL, and then send it repackaging and sending to remote Kubernetes cluster. And now you can see that I just got a new return here, Mike, which is really, really happening in the remote Kubernetes cluster, not my local machine. If you actually get all data, like a number four here, it's so not only SQL, you couldn't actually change anything here. Okay, I just changed my mind. I don't want to refer to my computer man anymore. However, my local file system just for the test and then like a looking for the Quarkus Pro here and then I just save a file. And then let me try to go to greeting again. And then when I go back to a uh, remote runtime and it really define, uh, detected the application properly, also change it. And then green resource Java class also change that. And then go to here, now you can see that uh, Quarkus 4, Kubernetes Java rather than Quarkus 362 something like that. That's it. Uh, that's uh, what I all showcase today. And then hopefully you enjoyed my session and demo. Yeah, feel free to reach out to me if you have any question and any other, uh, like a, some uh, uh, like a, some technical uh, question around the, not only Quarkus, but like a more like a Kubernetes and then serverless uh, service mesh. I'm more than happy to address your question. Thank you so much and then happy Thursday. And then I'm gonna uh, hand over back to Mike. Mike, you on mute.
that would help, isn't it, late in the day? All right, thanks, Daniel. Thanks for a great session. Uh, well, this wraps up our Dev Nation Day today. I want to thank everyone for joining us. Hopefully, you found some some interesting and, and uh, you know, informative and educational content along the way. Uh, as a reminder, these will be pushed out to the uh, Red Hat Developer YouTube channel in a couple of weeks by the to allow them to to process the videos and get those uploaded. So uh, look for that. Um, you will be receiving a email shortly from, uh, I believe from Hopin or Ring Central that basically a post uh, event survey. We uh, de definitely would like you to provide your feedback on the event, how it went, the session, the content and all that so that we can continue to improve these going forward. So again, thanks for your time and, and joining us today and look forward to seeing you at the next one. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.